thank you so much for joining us. You're watching All Angles. I'm Dion Jackson, and welcome to our viewers on OneSpotMedia.com. As you can probably see, we have a different type of program for you today. Now, following the publication yesterday of two reports from the Integrity Commission dealing with Petrojam and operations at Petrojam, one over 400 pages, one over 200 pages, we're going to use this program to give you a deep dive into the contents of those reports. We know many of you would not have an opportunity to actually read them. And joining me on set to help me out, Damian Mitchell, my colleague from the Gleaner, integration editor. Damian is a whole heap of reading. Many, many pages. Uh, in fact, I was noting from the, the Integrity Commission report that this is the second of three reports. Now, it's very important to note that the Integrity Commission tabled in the Parliament uh, yesterday two reports. So we are expecting a third report to come out. Not quite sure yet exactly what that report, report will be speaking to, but it's likely to be about the issue of the companies that were given contracts by Petrojam. You recall that infamous wall, the wall. that was built uh, yes. at Petrojam. I am suspecting that that may be among the issues to come out in the, in the next report. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, let's start going through them and um, just to say that the minister, the former minister of energy, Andrew Wheatley, a short while ago issued a statement denying any kind of wrongdoing, saying he welcomes the reports, said he has not yet read them, but based on what's been in the media, he is categorically denying any kind of wrongdoing or nepotism on his part. We'll come to his statement as well a little bit later on in the program. All right, so report number one deals with acts of irregularity, impropriety, conflict of interest, corruption, nepotism, cronyism and favoritism. So let's start by looking at the issue of recruitment. So it speaks about the recruitment of a name Jamaicans um, would remember from the last time the Petro Jam issue was in the news, former HR manager Yolande Ramharak. And, and it went into detail in terms of how she was actually appointed, that she responded to an ad in the Sunday Gleaner, but apparently that ad had not been placed by the HR, HR department, department of Petrojam Petro at all. Yes. There was an email address in the ad, energysect.gmail.com, but it turned out that that email address was not the email address that was used by the HR department. Um, when the GM, then GM Grindley, was asked about it, he said the extent of his involvement was that he was on the interview panel. And it's important to point out here to Dion that Ram Harak was a part of the PCJ board, which is the parent company for Petrojam. So essentially, you had someone who was a part of a board who was going to be taking up an executive position in a subsidiary. And also, she was, if my memory serves me correctly, a member of the HR committee of the parent company board. Okay. Now, the GM had said his only involvement was to sit on the interview panel, but it emerged from the other people in the HR department who spoke with the, the Integrity Commission that in fact it was the GM who had sent HR the names of three candidates and said, hey, interview these people, because remember, as we said, the ad wasn't placed by HR, they didn't know anything about it, they said. He gave them these three names, including Mrs. Ramharak. And the interview panel was a GM himself, PCJ Director Richard Creary, as well as U Electro and Chemical Pathologist Dr. Lowell Dilworth. And she started on the 17th of February. So there were two offer letters on the same day, one of them offering an annual salary of about 10.5 million, the second letter, 12.9 million. And Petrogem had a policy that new employees should undergo a three-month probationary period. But that period was waived by the general manager in the case of Mrs. Ramharak. She was listed as an employee for the purposes of the incentive scheme with a starting salary of about $13 million. And having started on the 13th of February, she got an incentive payment for of $173,000 for what would be about a six-week period. I think we may be coming to the issue of qualifications because that's also an issue that has been raised in the Integrity uh, Commission report as to whether Ram Harak was indeed qualified for this position. It required, it required a, a master's degree. She did not have a master's degree at the time she was applying for the post. Still yet, she got this post as the HR manager of Petrojam. And a very interesting finding in the report has to do with the rating that she got for education by the three panelists who interviewed her 
excellent, all of them had uh, noted on their appraisal sheets. But when questioned, two of the three members, at least two members of the, of the interview panel, said they didn't have a job description. So they were interviewing her for a job. They had her resume, but they didn't have the job description and the minimum qualifications for the job. So in effect, they were marking in a vacuum. They had no reference point to say whether or not she, her qualifications were excellent. So, I, in fact, I hadn't included that, so I am glad you raised it. She also was asked about the issue of the MBA. Listeners may recall she told the PAAC that she was halfway through her MBA. Um, when questioned by the Integrity Commission, she said, yes, she's halfway through, although she has not yet sat any exams for any of the nine modules for the and MBA. And she also did say that she had done several courses yes. which would have uh, made her qualified. I, I think... If we should throw our minds back, we recall that the now state minister in the Ministry of Education, Alanda Terlong, uh, was in fact endorsing her appointment to the, to the Petrojam, saying he too, would have, uh, uh, he too would have employed her. Clayton Smith, no, he is a brother of Mrs. Ram Harak. Now, he had applied um, f at a job for a job at Petra Jam as early as January in 2017. This was before Mrs. Ram Harak was there. He didn't have any experience or education in the field. Two of the three members of the interview panel said they would not recommend him. The third member just hadn't made any recommendation at all. His average rating at the interview was 1.4 out of 5. The HR officer recommended that he be rejected, and he sat a competency test in math, English, mental ability, and me mechanical comprehension, and did not achieve the required level of 75%. And here it, where it becomes interesting, because Mrs. Ram Haratno, having come on, gave instructions for him to be tested again, which the HR department said was not usual. He again failed to obtain the score about 75, above 75%, except in one area, mental ability, and he was given an offer letter signed by his sister. And some of the scores were really dismal. So, for example, in the issue of word meanings, he was, I think, getting... I think it was 8 out of, out of 20 or something to that effect, which was pretty low. Uh, there were some other mental ability, for example, as you've said here, is the only area in which he had um, attained some score. But there were some very critical elements on which he was tested. If you are going to be an electrical a technician, then it, it is expected that you would have to be competent. This is and especially the mechanical yeah. competent test. He failed that twice and he was employed as an instrument and electrical technician. Now, Mrs., I think that's Ms. Sean Daly, I'm just going to call her Na Daly, Nabel. Um, she actually worked in Dr. Wheatley's constituency office. She went for an interview. She actually said that she was asking for a job, and um, the counselor said to her, you know, go and check out Petra Jam. She said the counselor had sent up her resume. She said she was interviewed by Mrs. Ramharak only, which is not Petra Jam says normal policy. The Integrity Commission said there's no record of her interview on file. She did not possess the qualifications for the job. Nonetheless, she was offered the job as a receptionist telephone operator at a salary of $165,000 per month. And after the issue started to come to light, her employment was terminated for failing to validate her qualifications. And then we had the Reverend Dorothy Grant, who was hired to provide chaplaincy services at $3,000 an hour at about $1.3 million from April to December 2017. But Petrojam already had a program, a counseling program with Family Life Ministries. And they also said Reverend Grant didn't show any qualifications of having, actually being a counselor. And beyond that, there was no record to show, and this came out in the Auditor General's report, as to who were the clients of uh, the Reverend who Dorothy, did she counsel? Dorothy Grant. Exactly. Uh, still yet, she was submitting bills to Petrojam and was being paid. And at the end of the year, she was offered a contract at a higher rate of $4,000 per hour. That was then terminated in August 2018. Then we had Mr. Cole, who had a degree in chemical engineering. He was a lecturer. Now, in December 2017, he interviewed for a job as a process engineer. 
one of the people who interviewed him was a project manager on the va vacuum distil distillation, distillation unit project. He was rejected because they said all he had was academic experience. He didn't have any industry experience. And then they said, hold on, they were surprised that he was then included in the second round of interviews, having been recommended by Mrs. Ram, Ram Harak, as well as the manager of technical services. And he was then hired as a project director having been rejected for a lower position four months earlier. $8 million a year, no evidence that the job was advertised, no job description attached to the position. The position had not been approved by the finance ministry. Although they had approved a separate position as a project manager, and his employment was terminated in August 2003. Um, Mr. Grinley, the general manager, just a point. They note that his interview panel consisted of Mrs. Ramharak, as you mentioned, who was then a director of PCJ. Mr. Chambers, a director, Dr. Percival Badahu Singh, a former um, PCJ and Petrojam director, and Dr. Ike Johnson, a former assistant VP of Scotia Investment. We're at the surprise party for Dr. The Weasley. surprise party. The surprise party, <laughs> or we should say one of the two surprise yes. parties. But we're at the break, so let's go to the break and we'll be back.